Hi, writes new member V. I'm a new member, and I was fascinated by the discussion of the case of the individual mandate before SCOTUS. If I understood correctly, Sam thinks it would be a good thing if the mandate were ruled unconstitutional because this would crash the insurance companies because it, without it, their business model is unsustainable. Is this the correct interpretation? So if it is, and the insurance companies crash, would this necessarily lead to something better, like Medicare for all? Well, I mean, I think uh, you heard uh, Sherrod Brown. I think they were on the road to that. And I think um, I, I, I think there's probably some truth to the fact that we're headed in that direction one way or another. But as if I had an unnatural capacity, once I get an email from a new member who also gets one of these, as if I had an unnatural capacity to essentially sign writers, expert in the healthcare field, to address your question. On June 16, Sarah Cliff in the uh, Bloomberg News, I believe it is, or uh, Washington Post, I should say, writes that in 1993, Washington State passed a law both guaranteeing all residents access to private health insurance, regardless of their health status, and requiring Washingtonians to purchase coverage. In other words, you cannot be denied if you have a pre-existing condition. But everyone must buy health insurance. The state legislature, however, repealed the, the last provision two years later, that being the mandate. With the guaranteed access provision still standing, that is, you can't be denied with a pre-existing condition, the state saw premiums rise and enrollment drop as residents only purchased covered when they, coverage when they needed it. So basically people said, I'm going to wait till I have a some type of, I, I am aware that I have some type of major medical expense in the not-too-distant horizon. Health insurers fled the state, and by 1999, it was impossible to buy an individual plan in Washington. No company was selling. In other words, you only could get employer-based coverage if you weren't employed or you were self-employed. You were out of luck. It uh, was essentially a disaster in Washington State. One report from the Washington State Insurance Commissioner's Office at the time described it. The insurance market has entered a death spiral with, co with customers only buying coverage when they needed it. Death spiral you will hear a lot in discussing uh, health care. And they're talking about the business model of the insurance companies. You will also hear guaranteed access. That, again, is in reference to saying that you cannot be denied based on your age or your health or pre-existing condition. What effectively happened was you got to this tipping point where we couldn't afford to do business and the individual uh, coverage was simply not available, said a health insurance company spokesperson. In 2000, Washington state legislature significantly modified its guaranteed issue policy. Insurers would still have to cover most residents, but those with pre-existing conditions could be required to wait nine months for the policy to kick in. The very sickest applicants would, meanwhile, be eligible for coverage at a, in a high-risk insurance pool administered by the state. There are now high-risk insurance pools all across the country as a function of the Affordable Care Act, sort of midwifing the time now and 2014 where all those people will actually be able to buy coverage in the uh, greater healthcare exchanges. Washington State's insurance market now has nine companies selling individual policies compared to the 19 that participated in 1993. 13% of Washington State residents currently lack health coverage, the same number as when the health reform experiment started. So the question is, what can you extrapolate on a national level if these insurance companies cannot flee, f flee the United States. That they will have to sell this uh, on insurance markets. 
Well, I would suggest that what will happen is uh, premiums will rise significantly, though they are still bound by other provisions of the law to uh, spend 80 percent of their premium collection on health care. That cost of health care will go up as the number of premiums they get from otherwise healthy people goes down. And it will force some type of reckoning that I suspect could lead to some form of single payer. I, we just don't know. We don't know if the Supreme Court is going to strike down just the mandate or bigger provisions of law. It's unclear. And yes, pregnancy is counted as a pre-existing condition. Indeed.